Well, I must admit, this warm weather's certainly keeping me on my toes this week. You've no sooner watered something and it's dried out again. You've really got to keep your eye on your plants this weather. I watered mine yesterday morning, four hours later, they're all drooping again. There was that warm, but it's going to carry on right up to the weekend. So where you can, use bottom watering trees. I've got a couple of plants that I need to sort out this morning as well. They definitely need moving on. We've got another melon plant, Crimson Sweet, that's actually looking quite healthy. And we've got a Jack the Little pumpkin plant, and it's the only one I've got. So we definitely need to look after that. If you've never grown those Jack the Little pumpkins before, what they are is a miniature pumpkin. And although they're a vining plant, like your normal sized pumpkin, the vine actually only grows to six to eight feet long. So you can grow those up a trellis because the fruits are only as big as tennis balls. Little orange miniature pumpkins. Perfect for children at Halloween, but also they're edible as well. So not only can you grow those as a novelty, but they're also an edible product at the same time. And that's why we grew them last year. So we're gonna try some more of those this year. And I believe that you can get a white version of those that grows at the same size. And I think they're called Baby Boo. So if you've never grown those before, maybe give those a try, because once again, you can grow those in containers. If you look back on us previous videos, we have got a couple of videos that show you exactly how those plants grow in a container up trellis. And the reason we're growing those crimson sweet melons is because they're a little smaller than your average size melon, but more importantly, they contain less seeds. And that's why I've picked those. Just before we get started though, we did receive a couple more donations yesterday. And they were from Susan Considine, Brendan Wellen, and Chico's mummy. Obviously, those donations are massively appreciated because they help towards the cost and materials that we use when we make these videos, like compost pots and trays. So we'll make sure that money is put to good use. Thank you very much for that. I'll show you this pumpkin plant. Nice, healthy looking plant, but the bottom leaves they've basically gone. So we'll take those away, but we have to be careful because if you look down there, it's trying to put some new growth out. And it's doing exactly the same other side right there. So whether we pinch them off or cut them off with scissors, I'm trying to be careful not to damage that part of the plant. And the exact same thing with this little melon plant. But the bottom leaves on this one are perfectly healthy still. So I'm going to move them into slightly bigger containers. That size will do for now. While ever we're doing this, we're also sowing extra seeds as well. These are a couple of plants that we've got left that we've not moved on yet. I think everything else is pretty much done. I'm not going to fill that right at the top. I'll move this pumpkin plant first. No root problems at the moment, but very wet, which is surprising since it's in this greenhouse. I think this new compost I'm using is holding moisture a lot longer than the other ones do. So I'm just gonna infill around that plant. Now we've got it in. Try not to bury that stem as well. So we'll firm it all down. Keep straightening it as we go. And I'm just gonna level that top out a little bit. And that should do it. Not gonna water it because you could see how saturated the compost was. I'm going to put a bit of slow release fertilizer around this plant so when we do water it it'll take nutrients straight down. I'll stick that label back in as well because they look very similar to courgette or cucumber plants. So that's moved on. That leaf's not doing very well so I'm going to wait till it puts a bit more growth on and then we'll get rid of that. And I'm probably going to need to stake it as well. I'll just put a little cane in this container just to start with. 
But I need to get jobs like this done because when it comes to things in pots like this, they're gonna dry out really fast. We don't need it this weather. So I've got another one of those pots and I'll move that one into there as well. Pressing this soil down a little bit because that plant's in a smaller pot. And using the same pots, make my all in advance. And then we can drop this plant straight in with no problems. This one has got quite a few roots to it. And they are at bottom at container, so it's a good job we're moving it. And this one's just going to sit straight in. And a quick infill around that one as well, making sure that we're not burying any deeper than the first leaves that came out. If you've got leggy ones, you can bury them a little bit deeper, and that goes for cucumbers as well. Just pinch off those bottom leaves and then set them down an inch or so deeper. But that's only if your plants are leggy. Normally, you'd not need to do that. And again, a bit of a top dressing. And that's that plant set up as well. So as far as I'm aware, the last two that we needed to move on. And now what I need to do is go around and water everything in the garden before it gets to this afternoon. Because this afternoon it's going to get warmer. So I like to do it in the morning. But also, today's feeding day. So I'm going to mix up some liquid seaweed and I'll mix it up in a watering can and then I can go around and give every single plant its fortnightly feed. And don't forget to do that. The nutrition, especially in containers, soon depletes. So feed them diluted tomato food or liquid seaweed every 10 to 14 days. And I'm also gonna to have to tie these plants up as well. These tomato plants are now really starting to put some height on. So we'll loosely tie them to those canes so we don't want them falling over and bending those stems. But they've really shot up in just a couple of weeks since we put those in. And that courgette is doing really well too that we're putting. Lots and lots of new growth. There's a couple of leaves right at the bottom that we need to pinch off. And that's the second lot of tomatoes that we were putting. And they weren't very big plants. But once again, they're starting to put some height on. So we'd better get some canes in there. This plant's doing really well. This is one that I bought quite a while ago. And it's in a really big bell pot. What originally came in a nine centimeter pot. And you can see just how much growth that's put on. And pretty soon that'll be covered in yellow flowers. Looks like we've got a bit of germination as well in here. That'll be the spinach that we did, the new one. And I've still got this little tomato plant. We've had it soaking in that tree, with it being so warm to stop it drying out. And it is it's trying to grow little tomatoes as small as this plant is. Then we've got a container of onions there. There, the pickling onions. That new batch that we've done. But all those plants in here are looking really healthy still. Getting a few flowers on them as well. That's the second lot that we put in. And they've pretty much tripled in size since we put them in. And we've got a row of peppers in front of there as well. But we definitely need to keep on that watering today. We'll get all that sorted out this morning. Because there's plenty that needs watering. We have got a problem with that new spinach that we're putting. If you notice, it's starting to grow flowers on top and it's grown really tall. Basically, it's gone to seed. While it's even still a very small plant and there's one at the back there, that's done the same. And that's the problem with spinach. When weather gets warm, it'll soon bolt. So you're better off keeping that in a shady spot if you can. We've got lots of fresh flowers come up in here as well. Lots of those California poppies looking really nice. And slightly bigger pears on this pear tree now. But all these plants in here are perennials. 
we planted those probably two years ago and then they just all come back again so you've got a permanent display of colour without having to put any effort in and that's a dianthus very small plant I put in there last year it was only a nine centimetre pot and this year it's ten times as big as it originally were that's doing really well because again dianthus or pinks as some people call them are also perennial plants we're starting to get more growth on this raspberry plant now as well I've just made a little cane structure and we'll let it grow up there and pin it up as it grows and we did exactly the same with this golden raspberry plant as you can see things are starting to go a bit limp now especially that tomato plant there so we better get some feed mixed up and give all these plants a water I'll just give them a quick water to pick them up before we add that feed and you can see that we're going all across the bottoms of those plants not all the top as you just saw we've got lots and lots of plants that are doing really well especially those perennial flowers plant ones and just let them regrow every single year obviously perennial flowers are a little bit more expensive than your annuals but well worth it if you can get hold of some in a sale because you'll never have to plant again Meanwhile, everything is drying out more and more, as you saw in that container garden. So I'll get this feed mixed up and we'll give everything a good feed this morning. But as you saw, a few of the plants can't really wait. So we need to boost them with a little bit of water because they are really starting to sag now. And then when that's dried out a little bit, we'll add a little bit of diluted feed in there. So I'm gonna crack on and get that job done. And if you're doing any jobs today, don't do too much work in your greenhouses because it's getting otter and otter bite day. And if you'd like to follow this channel for the rest of the season, please hit that subscribe button and press that notifications bell. And we'll see you next time. Take care.